Have you ever seen a dueling double head kick mid-fight? Well, you're about to, and spoiler alert, there's only one winner. What about some deadly short-range elbows while on the defense that absolutely sleep the opponent? Oh, and we have a contender for the farthest launched mouthpiece during a fight? Yeah, that's a fun one. And just some more crazy regional MMA violence that is all thanks to Kaposa who eats, sleeps, and drinks MMA, so go give him a follow on his Twitter at Grabaka underscore Hitman if you want more content. Content just like this. What is going on? It's the casual Lawton Veerkant, and this is Kaposa's Corner. Kicking us off this week, we are going to ACA's Young Eagles 24 event in Russia, where it was a busy one, so we have three fights to show you. For the first, we have a bantamweight matchup between Andre Loptev, sitting at a 3-0 record, and he's taking on Amir Aliyev, who also has a 3-0 record. So, the first half of this round basically stays on the ground, but once we go to the feet, Aliyev starts throwing these huge knees and and I think that might be how he wants to finish this fight. Что за бой мы наблюдаем? Вот это да. И еще тяжелейшее колено. Все. Jumping switch knee as he comes back in and it is lights out for Andre. Someone was obviously going to take their first loss in this fight, but Aliyev does exactly what it takes to keep his record clean at 4-0 and secure this great first round win. For our second fight at ACA Young Eagles 24, we have a featherweight bout that sees Hassan Dadalov with a 6-2 record and his opponent, Kadir Klitschanov, has a clean 3-0 record. This fight actually makes it to the second round and just 45 seconds in, well, just just listen to this knee. Yeah, not only does he crack him with his knee directly to the face, but then he proceeds to land the standing guillotine, which the ref ultimately intervenes with, and this fight is over. Oh, and check this out. Out of pure excitement, yeah, Dadalov gets a running start and just punches the shit out of the camera. I think that might be coming out of his paycheck, but I'm sure he won't care because he secured this win and improves his record to 7-2. Now we have our third and final fight at ACA Young Eagles 24, and this is the featherweight main event which has Jambulat Selimanov with an 8-2 record, and he's up against Magomed Kadiev who has an 8-1 record. This is the fight I mentioned in the intro about some deadly short range elbows, so just a minute and a half in, Selimanov is pushed against the cage, defending a takedown, and he might have just found the best way to escape the situation. Магомеда Кадиева, она уже там заливать начинает буквально из соперника. That was by far the slowest and most calm knockout I have ever seen in MMA. You can't even fully see where exactly it connects, but just look at the sharp little elbows he throws, and the last one connects, and you can see Kadiev go limp and fall to the ground. I know we're used to seeing explosive knockouts and submissions here at Kaposa's Corner, but the precision and patience in this one was just too good to not include. Selimanov lands this win in just two minutes of the fight, improves his record to 9-2, and he is now on a four-fight win streak. Moving on, we're gonna go visit Octagon 27 in Uzbekistan, where we have one fight to show you. This is a welterweight fight between Abdulaziz Satvaldiev with an even 2-2 two two record, and he's up against Erke Bulan Taktar, who just has a 2-1 record. This is another fight that I mentioned in the intro about the farthest flying mouthpiece to date this year, and just over two minutes into the first round, well, tell me if you see it. Dear Lord, first he gets dropped by this combo, and as he's standing up, he is met with this huge left hook that just flatlines him and sends the mouthpiece flying. Toktar was just absolutely dominating this fight, and it paid off as he gets the first round win and improves his record to 3-1. and one. Up next, we're going to take a look at Georgian Fighting Championship 15, where we have none other than Kapoz's KO of the week. Here, we have a bantamweight matchup between Otar Tanzilov with a clean 5-0 and o record, and he actually competed in the IMAF tournament back in 2019, but sadly lost in the third round. And he's up against Rafael Sorez, who has a 2-3 and three record. This is one of those ones where it just doesn't seem like a very fair matchup given Otar's experience, but we're nearing the final minute of the first round, and he lands this spinning back kick, which Rafael recovers from quickly, but not for long. Oh, 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 oh,
a beautiful jumping switch kick directly to the chin and Rafael is down and out for the count. Kaposa noted just how perfect this switch kick was, which is exactly why it made KO of the week. Otar gains another win and keeps his record crystal clear at 6-0 and hopefully keeps some momentum from this win to land some more. Now we're gonna go visit Contra MMA 1 in Poland where we have one fight. This is a welterweight bout that has Tomasz Trela with a 3-2 and two record and his opponent Machi Yannick who has a holy shit 0-6 oh, record. MMA might not be the best career path for you my dude. But anyways round 1 starts and the leg kicks are flying. <laughs> Get it? And just 28 seconds in, well, this happens. <laughs> Okay, first off, yes, we sadly only have this one angle, but no, we could not leave this one out. A dueling double head kick, which Yannick comes out on top as the victor, and Trela just folds down to the canvas. While this was only his first MMA win, we are definitely thankful that we were here to witness it because that head kick was just beautiful. Next up, we're gonna visit Almighty FC 23 in England, and this one is more of an honorable mention, as we only have one angle and only 30 30 seconds of footage, but here we have a light heavyweight matchup that sees Robbie Kennedy with the black and gray shorts and just a 1-2 and two record, and he's taking on Rhino Daly with the black shorts and just an 0-1 oh record. Now, take a look at this. Nice. Oh! oh! Walk away! It's done! Kennedy gave him plenty of warning with this first high kick that narrowly misses, but Daly just ignored it and then paid the price by eating this front kick. Just a perfect walk-off front kick KO, which I know we all love to see here, and Kennedy lands this win and evens his record to 2-2. Two and two. Off to visit Brazilian Fighting Series 6, we have a bantamweight bout between Jefferson Pajaya sitting at an even 2-2 two and two record, and he's up against Tiago Osorio with a 1-1 one one record. We've been really good about first round finishes this this week and this one stays in line with that as we are just passing the one minute mark and someone's about to take a nap. Boa troca de golpes agora, o Jefferson consegue esquivar. Ih, que é isso? Que é isso? Yeah, an overhand right from hell directly to the chin, followed by one face plant to the canvas, and this fight is over. Pahea just sends him down and out and then slowly backs up, knowing there's nothing more he needs to do. What a win for him as he gets this nice highlight to look back on and improves his record to 3 and 2. Still going, we have Arena Global 16 next, also in Brazil, for one fight. Here we have a welterweight matchup that has Guilherme Silva with only a 1 0 record, and he's taking on Michael. Oliveira, who is making his pro debut. This is yet another quick one that happens in just 40 seconds of the fight, and this one is a little creepy to watch. Michael Oliveira, da equipe Maxi Kickboxing. So, Kaposa titled this one Suspended Zombie KO. And although we've seen a few like this in the past on the show, where a fighter gets held up by the cage while being unconscious, it still is very freaky to watch. Oliveira first catches him with the left that stuns him, and then the follow-up hook combo is what puts him out while leaning against the cage. What a great win for him that he secures just 40 seconds in, and he secures his first pro win. For our last Last fight this week, we're gonna take a look at our good friends at B2 Fighting Series 148 in Kentucky. Here we have a welterweight fight between Gavin Agnew sitting at a 2-2 two two record, and his opponent, Irvin Jones, who has a 4-3 record, and he competed in the IMAF tournament in 2016, but sadly lost his first fight. So to wrap this week up, it only makes sense to show you guys a one-hitter quitter that happens in just a minute and a half of the first round. That landed flush. Oh! 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 Huge overhand right! Boom! An overhand right followed by a slow walk-off. That sends Agnew down immediately and this fight is over. This is another one that couldn't really have been much cleaner as the right connects to his chin beautifully and that is all it takes. Jones gets this impressive first round win that improves his record to 5-3. and three. Another week down and it is all thanks to Kaposa so go show him some support by following him on his Twitter at Grabaka underscore Hitman and you can also show him some support by checking out his Patreon at patreon.com backslash Kaposa. And we want to say a huge thank you to all of these organizations for constantly giving us the regional MMA violence we so desperately need and to the fighters, winners, and losers and we will see you all on the next video. Peace!